Uh, my name is J.R. Olive. Um, I'm the project director for the Mill Hill East Macon Arts Village currently. That's a project of the Macon Arts Alliance. And I've been in Macon since 2004 when I was a student at Mercer. I'm Andrew Silver. I'm a professor at Mercer University and uh, chair of Friends of Tattle. And I've been here since 1998, so I'm in my 20th year here in Macon. The park has never been uh, particularly unsafe. The vast majority of the days in this park, are, you had people who are uh, peacefully enjoying the place. I would describe the park not as unsafe, but as unkempt. I would describe it as unkempt, uncared for, and um, looking decrepit. It looked dangerous. It wasn't dangerous. It started over litter. Um, people were toppling over big green bins and sorting through trash and then leaving the trash everywhere. And so there were a couple of moms who used the playground with their kids. I had a little kid at the time and all of us simply wanted to clean up the trash and that's how it began. Shortly after that, uh, the Knight Foundation had the Knight Neighborhood Grants that were being offered. That helped us, it helped give us an organizational drive and it gave us the luxury that so many friends of groups don't have, which is money. Neighborhood, neighborhood grants happened in tandem with an overall effort really led by Mercer, but with partners at the city and Knight Foundation, obviously, to really build this neighborhood. Focus hard on this specific neighborhood adjacent to campus and, and bring, bring neighbors together and fund ideas and, and really sort of make transformative change. We got started as a group in two, 2011. It was, um, it was, we met on the same day in December that like a hundred years ago they had met <laughs> to form the first Tat All Square Improvement Association that actually is responsible for whatever bones are in this park. And that was also spearheaded by then acting president of Mercer, who I later found out lived in my house. And then that kind of freaked me out because I thought like ghosts were messing with me in some way, you know? <laughs> They're like pulling my strings about the park. Our main goal right now is to make sure that everybody in the city understands that though this seems like an easy place to maintain because it's all natural, it's not, there's no rec center other than the small building that's the tennis center, um, parks require non-stop maintenance and it's investment of money and if you don't invest the money in maintenance, your park will go to seed literally and figuratively within a year or two. For me, my favorite thing about the park is, are the trees. There's only one thing that you do in your public spaces that actually gathers value every single year. And it's the thing that is so easily forgotten when you're going for the big splashy stuff, literally or figuratively, trees. And it's the most important thing. Where are we standing right now? We're standing beneath the shade of trees that were planted in 1914. The symbol of the park was a symbol for many people of uh, decline. And now it's become a symbol of Macon's sort of spirit.